Hello and welcome back to Bums Breakdown. This is going to be episode three. I'm going to preview the Phoenix Rising game coming this weekend. And as always, joined by Dylan. Dylan, to begin with here, what did you make of our first game of the season versus Detroit this weekend? Well, it's uh, it was good to be back. Um, it was a cold, rainy night in San Diego. Well, not rainy, but foggy. But um, kind of gave it a bit of an ominous kind of traditional you know soccer game vibe but um it was a grind uh i wouldn't say we played badly necessarily but i think we struggled to implement the ideas that we had um and detroit city to their credit set up and stifled as well yeah i think obviously we would have loved a a much more open free-flowing game and i know last week when we previewed the detroit game we always knew it would be a fairly close matchup both teams play a similar formation and kind of we, I say we almost matched them in a way as kind of playing with a front three and just having a midfield two there. So there was parts of the game where I thought we looked promising, parts that I'm still, I guess I'm trying to look optimistic as far as that we're still trying to work things out. Again, we kept most of the same team from last season. Obviously, the attack midfield looked a bit, a little bit different in the first game, having Conway as a kind of one target striker. So there is points of that game where I'm, obviously happy about points i'm a bit more nervous for you do you kind of what are the your key main takeaways from that game i mean are you thinking that that what we saw in the first game is going to be completely different from the end of the season do what do you see how you see the pro- progression going this year well i think it's always hard for the first game of the season because you want the team to come out of the gates firing on all cylinders and i think honestly that's often not realistic um, I think, like you said, there were some things in the attack that were promising, some nice little passages of play that maybe didn't quite finish the way we wanted them to or um, lacking final balls. Uh, but I think that to look at some positives, um, the defense and the midfield were so solid. The defense managed pretty much everything Detroit sent their way. Um, really the only real chances Detroit had that I can recall came from giveaways in bad areas. Uh, the midfield controlled the ball, recycled well in possession in the attacking third. Um, so I personally am optimistic. Um, I think that there's always room for improvement, of course, but with the now official addition of Ronaldo Damas, um, I think that'll just add another super dynamic dimension to our attack, um, So I I wouldn't call myself worried, no. Yeah, and obviously I know we mentioned in the last episode that we kind of felt like we were missing another forward, another striker, and obviously the addition of Ronaldo Damas today, um, formerly of uh, Orange County, and last season was at Sundsvall uh, alongside Joe Corona as well. So hopefully with the addition of him, we see him maybe this weekend into into the starting lineup. If not, I think he comes off the bench, definitely. But I think it just gives gives us a bit more in attack. and again, I know him saying for a while the kind of Kyle Vassell replacement. I don't think you really can replace a guy like Kyle Vassell, but um, uh, I'm just seeing to looking forward to seeing what Damas kind of adds to the team. And one more thing, going back to the last game as well. Obviously, I know we've always been a very attacking team, scored lots of goals. And I know a few fans this weekend were kind of saying that, hey, I mean, it didn't look great in the attack. It wasn't maybe the most exciting game to start the season, and maybe not kind of the didn't play the way that kind of you want kind of to get fans off their seats. And I think this year, as far as seeing Nate Miller's San Diego loyal, I think this year, hopefully we're going to try and be a lot more solid again. Maybe that means we don't score as many goals, but I think overall, if we can kind of get better results, concede less goals, inevitably it means that we do better in the league this season and hopefully into the playoffs too. Again, the, the old saying goes in America is that de- I, am, I hate to saying this defense wins championships, and that's true. So hopefully that, that's how the season looks. Um, and I can tell I've been in America a long time now that that is a, it's not, it's not a bad quote there. Um, I want to move into, though, this weekend's opposition. Phoenix Rising, uh, a big rivalry game. Uh, nice to get out of the way early on as well. Do you think the game is going to be kind of as close as or, I mean, not as close as it was last season. Do you think we see a kind of a, a whole brand new Phoenix this season? I mean, we absolutely will see an entirely brand new Phoenix this season. I think they retained four or five players from their end of season roster last year. Um, so Juan Guerra really cleared 
the house in his first off season as a uh, manager of Phoenix rising. Um, so I, I tend to say that in rivalry games, um, everything you expect goes out the window and I already don't know what to expect in this game. Um, so I think it's going to be a pretty wild game. I would expect a much more open, hopefully higher scoring affair than the Detroit game. Um, but I, uh, I definitely think Phoenix is, I don't even think Phoenix knows who they are just yet. Um, we, we both watched the Charleston game this past weekend. Um, and I think there's definitely still some development for that identity for Phoenix rising. So, um, we'll see what they bring this weekend. We'll give you our best guess though. Yeah, it's it's tough to really tell with them and kind of want to go like a, not a backstory here. Obviously Phoenix have been around for, I mean, I think almost 10 years now. Formerly Arizona United, they finally changed to Phoenix Rising in 2016. They had the likes of Didier Drogba and Sean Wright Phillips um, in the team previously. And then obviously going off their past season here as well. Uh, 2019, they made it to the semi-final of the playoffs. 2020, they made the final, but the final was uh, was cancelled due to COVID. Um, 2021, they finished top of the Western Conference. And then uh, they lost in the quarterfinals. And then last season for the first time in what I think probably the USL history. They didn't make the playoffs, uh, ended up finishing 10th and then finally got, not finally got around to, but they uh, ended up sacking their long-time manager as well. And like you mentioned, they're bringing Javi Cuera, but kind of we'll go through the off-season changes here as well. Obviously, I don't really want to speak about the history of Phoenix too much. Um, <laughs> I'm sure many people here don't don't want to hear about it. Um, but obviously, like you mentioned there, they've had a lot, a lot of changes this off-season here. I've got here that they retained just 26% of their minutes played last year and only Luden and Las Vegas both the lower ratios. Um, but obviously bringing in Javi Guerra kind of midway last season, this is his first kind of full preseason with the team. Uh, so, interesting to see how he puts his own stamp on the team, but I, I know you mentioned Javi Guerra. How does he like his team to set up? Well, he, we uh, loyal fans will know him well from his Phoenix, or uh, Oakland days, excuse me. Um, he put together that Oakland team that we haven't beaten in years. Um, and he sets up mainly in a 3-4-3 or a 3-4-2-1. Um, they like to press. They like to keep the ball on the ground. Um, and they like to play through the wingbacks, uh, primarily to create space for the attackers in the channels. So I would expect uh, to see some form of a 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1 look. Uh, in their first game against Charleston this past weekend, uh, they had um, kind of a kind of phase dependent shape like loyal have in past seasons where you're kind of a 4-4-2 in defense and then like a more 3-4-3 in attack um so we'll get into that a bit more but i would expect to see that kind of like 4-4-2 3-4-3 kind of hybrid shape this weekend yeah it's a it's a very fluid team and like i said it, it brings back memories of kind of r 4 4 2 into kind of a the 3-5-2 from last season uh obviously amongst those off-season changes they went ahead and lost uh was it aiden these, these irish names aiden quinn Santi Moore, Ben Lunt, the uh, German goalkeeper, actually went into the MLS. And Joey Farrell, obviously, I know Aiden Quinn's been around the USL for a while. He's always been a great midfielder. Santi Moore is going to be a big miss for them as well. And obviously, you don't always think about it too much, but as much as I don't like Ben Lunt, um, he was a great goalkeeper. And uh, they have made, obviously, some great additions in the summer here as well. Uh, out of the likes of Danny Trejo, obviously, we know from Las Vegas. And again, probably up there with signings of the offseason, honestly. I would have uh, loved to see him for San Diego. They brought in Fede Varela, uh, who's played in Europe um, for like CSK Sofia. I think he's played in La Liga um, and came through the ranks at Porto. Then also they brought in Zambrano and Gallardo, who both have M uh, MLS experience as well. But obviously looking at their off-season changes stuff, do you think this year they are a lot stronger than last season or is it kind of too early to tell? I think it is too early to tell. Um, I think think they will be a good team because there are enough good players in that roster um, and any team that has Danny Trejo scares me um, so I I think they'll be pushing for one of the bottom half playoff spots I think that like five through eight slot is where I think they'll end up um, but if you looked at uh, some of the preseason predictions they had one of the widest ranges of potential points finishes um, so I think we're all just kind of waiting to see uh, what kind of identity this team develops. Yeah, I think it's definitely too hard to tell right now. And like I mentioned there, obviously people are having a tough time trying to predict where they finish. And I think if they can get it clicking 
if they can play the the kind of the Javi Guerra way, I think they'll be a force to reckon with. But it depends, obviously, how quickly they can kind of get things clicking in the team. And we all know that the season's a long one. It may take some time for the players to gel. Obviously, they've, they've had a massive turnover. So we'll have to see about that. Um, but I want to move into here, kind of their best 11 and tactics. I know we've kind of gone off how they played last game. I know Machin Privacy too. That probably they'll line up in like a 4-4-2 that moves into a, a 3-4-3. But if you're going off the Charleston game, I mean, looking at it here, looking at the tactics here, back line, who do you think they go with in the back line? That's tough to say. Um, they had an injury about 20 minutes into their game against Charleston. Uh, Fuen Mayor came out, came out of the game and Darnell King, one of the few players who stuck around from last season, came in. Um, so I don't know is the short, is the short answer. Um, if I had to guess, though, I'm just going purely based off how they played the majority of the um, Charleston game. I would guess that the back line will consist of Crutzen, Lambert, King, and Traore, um, kind of a sort of lopsided back four they were playing. Um, they do also have Gabby Torres, uh, a fullback, I think a left back primarily, who I know is a player that a lot of people in Phoenix are very high on. Um, so might expect to see him come in. He had the assist on their one goal in the Charleston game. Um, but like we've said quite a few times now, um, I think even Phoenix doesn't quite know who their best 11 is yet. Yeah, so we may, we may see some changes into the next game. Who knows? Obviously, uh, in goalkeeper, they started uh, Rios Nova first game. Obviously, losing Ben Lund, it was hard to replace him. I know they also brought in the former Orange County goalkeeper as well. So I think Rios Nova could be the one they, they go with to begin with. Obviously, I know Javi Guerra likes to play out the back. Rios Nova looked fairly good on the ball, so... He was kind of one start on their attacks uh, when they were playing out the back. Moving into the midfield here as well. Uh, we've got here Trejo, probably start on the right-hand side. And then Zambrano and Hernandez in the middle. Um, with Zambrano, where did you kind of notice his movement uh, in the game as well? So they, um, especially once when Mayor came off and they went to more of a sort of true back four because um, they were playing a very lopsided back four at first. Um, you kind of had the two center backs, Crutzen and Lambert, splitting. And it would often be Zambrano, but sometimes Hernandez as well would drop between the center backs um, to mostly facilitate play. This was in the offensive phase. Um, in defense, they were kind of trying to be a more tight, compact four, back four, 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 two. Um, but yeah, you would see often Zambrano, but one of the midfielders dropping kind of in between the defenders to help uh, facilitate the movement of the ball in offense. Yeah, so I, it's kind of similar to us. Obviously, we had Charlie Adams and Corona dropping into that gap if need be, but kind of I think Carl Adams pretty much stayed true to that kind of center spot there. Um, and then the other player here, I missed out, Varela on the left, but obviously in the game on against Chelsea, he was the one kind of pushing into the middle and then allowing Torre to overlap on the on the left-hand side there. And the other two players up top here, we have uh, Coelho and Artega. Obviously, or not obviously, I keep saying obviously, but Coelho will probably more likely dropping in um, and let Ortega be in that kind of main striker, um, which I think, again, am I too worried about those front two? Not exactly, but it, it's still so, too early in the season, I think, to kind of go off that. Um, but obviously, like I mentioned earlier, Trejo is going to be the one that we, we know how good he is. If we can kind of limit him, I think uh, we'll do well in the game. Um, and also, like we mentioned previously, too, that Fuenwe uh, more than likely is a hamstring injury. So, the lineup we've mentioned there is our kind of best get best guess for uh, how they're playing. Obviously, got here that they play out from the back. We mentioned previously too, they have a uh, high fullbacks similar to us, and they're, they're like a high press. And I think you mentioned too that Charleston uh, kind of what was the best way that Charleston limited Phoenix in the uh, in the game of the weekend. In the first half, and even into the second half, up until uh, Phoenix made some some real changes to their shape and how they were looking to play the game. Um, so for really the first 70 or so minutes of the game, Charleston pressed hard on Phoenix and Phoenix struggled um, in the first half. I think there was less than five times that Phoenix cleanly broke the lines and played the ball up the field that in any way that resembled what it seemed like they were trying to do. Um, and then that trend continued into the second half, arguably even worse than it was in the first half. 
um, up until, again, Phoenix made changes, I think, in around the 67th, 68th minute. Um, so they are susceptible to the press. Uh, even once they equalized and had a better grip on the game, um, Charleston still had some success pushing them um, when they were trying to build. So I will hope to see Loyal do that a bit, um, but you know we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, must say, I think that's one of our key things that we're going to have here is that if we can press press them at the back, I think we'll uh, we'll have success. And we'll move into our lineup here. The main things we've got here, really, Guido is a back available for, sele- for full selection. Stoneman back in as well. And then uh, with the sign of Darmus as well, potentially could come into the team. And then obviously Kyle Adams has been called up for New Zealand, but more than likely he'll be away for the next game and not this one here. So I think we're, we're thinking we line up similar to in more of a 3-5-2. So obviously, I know last game was more of a basically a 3-4-2-1, 3-4-3 in a way. But I think the tough thing now is, I know we spoke about on the like the preseason preview that essentially it's going to be a, a tough battle for those midfield three spots. But after the last game, those back three could almost be uh, as fierce competition. For you, do you think Stoneman gets back into the team for the Phoenix game? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure that he does, though. I think it is hard to drop Simba out of the team. He scored the only goal which was an incredible finish. That was a finish any striker would be proud of. Um, He was man of the match, uh, and he won most of his duels. He had some of the most impressive defensive numbers on the field of either team. Um, I think it would be harsh to drop him. Um, Stoneman is a great player as well, obviously. Um, I think maybe considering the fact that Kyle Adams is leaving for international duty. Congratulations to him again um, in a couple weeks. So w- there will be some rotation anyway. I think maybe we don't we don't see Stoneman come back in right away, knowing that he'll be coming back in anyway, probably in the next game in Sacramento. Um, so I I think if I had to guess, uh, I would go that we probably have the same back three. Yeah, I'd have to agree with the obviously there with Kyle Adams going to win international duty. Stone was going to get his, going to get his opportunity to get back into the team, but I think right now is probably not the best time. And like I said it's tough to really drop Simba after his uh, great game on the weekend. And I think Ebi Akwam really put a foot wrong. And for me as well, again, Phoenix are a very are going to be a very dynamic team, going to be moving around a lot up top. And I think those back th- those back three of those guys there uh, give us the best opportunity to kind of limit how well they do an attack. Uh, fullbacks wise, nothing really changes. I don't think we can pretty much agree on that one straight away. And obviously missing their cocaine net. That's another pretty much foregone conclusion. In the midfield, do you think we're more than likely going to keep with a two in the midfield? Or do you reckon we go back to a three now that Guido is back available? I think we will go back to a three for two reasons. Um, one being what you just alluded to. Guido is back available. And I think we really missed his driving from deep ball carrying ability uh, against Detroit. And I think against Phoenix, that's going to be important against a team that likes to press. Um, but also, I think we will go to a three because, uh, like you have also alluded to, Phoenix are a very fluid team. Um, the goal they scored against Charleston came from like a left back, left mid, making a run from deep while a striker peeled wide and they got the ball across to Trejo. So they're a very fluid attacking team. So I think having the numbers in the midfield, in addition to Guido's particular skill set will be uh, advantageous to trying to prevent what Phoenix wants to do. Yeah, and obviously, I, I think ideally we, we can almost match them with that. And I think the fact that Guido more than likely could almost go a little bit higher as well, maybe even play behind the two strikers or play as one of those two behind the striker as well if you kind of do go with like a almost front three there as well. Um, so I think Guido's too good to, to leave out the team. And like I said, from the last game, we missed him dearly. So uh, I can't wait to have him back in the team as well. And then finally here, the front two. Now we've got another striker. This obviously ma- makes it a lot more tougher to decide those front th- 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 Oh, sorry, front two. But for you, who do you think gets those front two spots? Uh, well, I am divided here. Uh, my brain tells me that Ronaldo Damas is not going to start just because I think he's just kind of getting acclimated to the city and the team and the culture and, you know, what we're trying to do. So um, I expect logically that he might come off the bench. But I'm going to go with my heart today, and I'm going to say that it's going to be Damas and Conway up top. 
Yeah, I, I hope that's how we play. Obviously, no offense to Toomey and Perez. I thought they both had good games. But I think when you've got a player with a, well, I mean, a player as good as Dharma, it's hard to leave him on the bench. Again, he's just coming to the team. I don't know how much kind of training he's going to have with the team beforehand. So that might limit his kind of game time on the weekend. But I think in an idle world, we'll see him start straight away. So obviously we'll see there, but I'm looking forward to seeing how those... Uh, I mean, the front two of Darmus and Conway, I think, will be a great attack. And just looking forward to see how we kind of go around those front two, whether we kind of interchange those a bit more, how Darmus kind of fares with other players there too. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then we'll move on to kind of our key areas in the field or key matchups, which we think will be important here. And like I just mentioned earlier too, kind of Darmus Conway, if they do start... I'm looking forward, to, looking forward to seeing how they play there. And obviously, the first time we see Guido, Charlie Adams and Corona in the middle, um, who I think we spoke about on the season preview that potentially those are our best kind of midfield three. Obviously, Colin Martin's a great player. He's come back from injury still. So we'll see how he fits in there too. For Phoenix, who do you think are going to be the key players we have to stop to uh, if we give ourselves the best chance of winning the game? Danny Trejo. I mean, that's pretty simple. You know, like I said earlier, um, any team that has Danny Trejo, we, Loyal could win the U.S. Open Cup and then win the CONCACAF Champions League and then win the Club World Cup, and I would still be worried about any team that has Danny Trejo in it. So Danny Trejo. Um, but other than that, I would say the wingbacks. Um, like I alluded to earlier in this Charleston game this past weekend, Phoenix struggled to build through their wingbacks and create space for their forwards, um, and they – struggled i mean they made they made loyal's attack look pretty fluid at times um so i think the wingbacks are going to be a big area and I, I think being able to control those wide spaces will factor heavily in our ability to control guys like danny trejo yeah i think that's key enough so i've got here as well uh kind of limiting fede Vereda on the ball i like what he kind of showed in that charleston game again very nimble obviously loves to play that ball into the strikers and then lastly here uh, basically, don't let Zambrano dictate the play. Obviously, like, like I said earlier, too, he's the one that likes to drop in between the two centre backs, get the ball, and then kind of be the orchestrator of the team. So, again, if we can press him early on, limit his kind of time on the ball, I think we could uh, see some good periods of the game for us. Um, and again, going back to the last game, too, I think obviously, like you mentioned there with the full backs, not, let, not letting them their full backs get forward and get on the ball. I think that's what Jalson did well against us, and kind of I thought most of our attacks broke down because we couldn't get our fullbacks on the ball. So, again, if we can get our fullbacks out of the pitch, get them involved with the attack, I think we could kind of see some good periods of play. But it's going to be a tough one again. Again, they play in a pretty much, not not a similar formation, not the same formation, but almost similar as far as how they play, very similar to us. So, again, will we see more of the Charleston game? Sorry, more of the uh, Detroit game? I don't think so. I know early on you said about the game being more open, so... It should see a bit more attack and play. So that's what I'm hoping for. And uh, to wrap things up here, predictions for the game this weekend. I'm hoping Loyal come out firing. I'm hoping they come out, having seen that Charleston Phoenix game, come out pressing, looking to win the ball high up the field. I'm going to go three to one. Um, goal scorers, I'm going to go Domus. I'm going to go Conway. And I will go Nick Moon. Um, and then for... Phoenix, Danny Trejo, because obviously. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I pretty much, I've gone, I'm going 3 1 again as well. I was leaning more towards a draw. Again, I, I can't be saying that if we're playing against Phoenix. So I, I've gone to go on 3 1 here. For me, I, I think Guido gets back on the score sheet, gives me uh, some memories of the, uh, I think it was the first game against Phoenix last season when he scored um, it through the smoke and a little dance at the end. I think Conway finally gets off the mark. And then uh, I'm hoping for a Charlie Adams banger uh, on the weekend as well. And then like likewise for you, I've gone Danny Trejo as well. I think he's just, just too good not to kind of expect him to get a chance or two. And no doubt he'll uh, probably take one along the way there. But that will wrap things up there. We will be back again this weekend after the game. There was a few technical difficulties, but Locals last call will be after the game. This coming weekend and then we'll be, be previewing next week's game as well so we'll see you guys very soon and uh thanks again for watching or listening